Fuck yeah! Let's raid those guys! Look at that already! Hey Bishop Games, 100 tactical over if you have a boss. Thanks a lot, Nexon! Sweet Axe as well, Martin! And Nexus Game! And Joris and Nexus Game! Sweet! Boop. And they are here! Bishop Game Studios here! Sweet! I can see you hey. now! Sweet! Okay, so now I can only see you, David, but the audience cannot see you right now. Okay, so I'm gonna pop the little intro. Mr. David! So stay right there, alright? Stay right there. Good. Mm -hmm. I am. Awesome people, let's right to me! Please welcome everyone, welcome my good friend David Dio Bucket from Bishop Games. Let's say good hi, Mr. David. Uh, you on hey. screen now. How you doing, man? Oh, yeah, I can see you. some shy people behind. <laughs> There are some. Ah, there you go. There you go. There you go. I knew you were not only alone. Sweet. So that's the whole team, right, guys? Yeah. Yep. So there's Matt. Matt. Hey, Matt. <laughs> and Ben. And Hello. What's up? So what are your roles? Who are you? Are you a coder, artist, game designer? What's your team? So yeah, I'm David, uh, and I am the uh, programmer for the game. Sweet. I'm Ben. I'm the writer and the business guy for the game. And I'm Matt. I'm the artist for Lightfall. Sweet, 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 sweet. So only three peoples, guys. And you guys have yeah. been... Uh, yeah, I saw your game at PAX, actually. Like, your game is called Lightfall, right? I hope I did not miss that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, that's the name of the game. Okay, sweet. <laughs> yeah. Can you describe it a little bit? I will um, I will pop your trailer right after the, the, this interview. So can you describe a little bit what it is about? So uh, in that game, that's a platformer. And uh, you get the, the, uh, two power... You get the power to control a mobile platform, so you can pop it uh, in in mid air and reach places you cannot reach uh, otherwise. Okay, so you can like create new environment as you progress. Is yeah, it? exactly. Sweet. So, yeah, it creates a platforming that is uh, in which you, you feel a lot more free to to go anywhere. So there there are uh, wall jumps as well and stuff like that. And yeah. on top of that, the story is a very big focus for us. Okay. So uh, there's a narration uh, during the game, a bit like Bastion. Okay, okay, so it's a really narrative uh, thing. Oh, okay, sweet, yeah. sweet, sweet. Uh, what's the theme of the game? I believe it, it looks uh, like uh, the, you uh, you guys are playing with the mechanics of lights and darkness or something like that. Can you explain more about that a little bit? Uh, yeah, we can. Uh, anybody wants to talk a bit more? Yeah. I mean, I don't want to steal. Yeah, all right, all right, I got this. <laughs> so, uh, hey, yeah, Ben. Basically, uh, in Lightfall, Everything that's beautiful tries to kill you, so be it Everything light, beautiful animals. tries to kill you. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's like the real world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sweet. It's kind of weird. I'm just looking at myself on the computer screen of David and looking at the Skype thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with a little delay, well, with, yeah. with a little delay, so we can uh, see ourselves from the past. It's super creepy, super weird. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, so I'm gonna put. Like, I'm gonna ask you guys. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm talking to the audience right now. I'm gonna ask you guys if you have some question for my good friends of Bishop Games over here. So meanwhile, uh, you guys are on Kickstarter right now, I believe, right? Yes. yes. There's a, like a little link right now. Yeah, on we the start. Channel. We launch uh, at 10, 10, 10 a.m. this morning. So. Uh, oh, it was this morning. Yeah. This oh morning. shit. Oh, nice. Okay, so it's all fresh, and I can see that you already have a thousand bucks, man. Cool. Yeah. It's looking good for the for exclusive footage for you. <laughs> Sorry, what? Exclusive footage, just exclusive for you. footage. Are we are VIP guys? That's what's happening on Lash and Friends. Awesome, man. Okay, so you just started that. You still have thirty months, thirty days to go, and uh, yeah, you you're asking only for twenty thousand bucks. That's it. Well, the thing is, uh, we already self fund the game uh, quite a lot in the past year, and uh, okay. the twenty thousand dollar goal will be what. What's, what we need left to complete the development. Okay, to finish it. Uh, so, you know, we, we just, it can it can seem kind of low, but we just want to make sure we reach the goal. And we, we have set stretch goal up to like 100K. So it really depends on how the community uh, reacts to uh, or okay. supports the game or not. So, yeah. Ah, okay, okay. So it's basically almost, well, you, you still, uh, 
You got featured by IGN, as I just said. You were at PAX, so you have a pretty solid demo right now, I, I would suppose. So, yep. yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, so we have Mark and Sue on the audience asking, uh, what are the, the, the tools, the language, the IDE mm -hmm. that you use? So, tell me about the tools you use. I guess it's all Unity? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I guess that's a question for me. Uh, we are working uh, on Unity for that game, and uh, we s when we started, the 2D pipeline didn't exist, but we moved. Uh, to the okay. 2D pipeline, so 2D physics and uh, the sprite render renderer and everything like that. Okay. So, uh, that's what we are using for the game, and uh, we really don't regret uh, making the move. Okay. Uh, okay. There are a couple uh, very useful uh, tools we have in there, like uh, Fair 2D. If you don't know that uh, that tool, uh, it's a uh, it's a tool that allows you to uh, create the ground very fast. Okay. Uh, you have a, a game uh, in a silhouette style like us, like uh, ours are other 2D games, uh, that, that's perfect to create a very efficiently uh, your level. Okay, and what's the name of the tool again? Uh, it, it's uh, oh, yeah, fair, me. fair 2D, F-E-R-R 2D. F -E uh, Okay, yeah. F-E-R-R, -R. Okay, I'm gonna link that in the chat as well. Yeah. And you mentioned that uh, when you started, there was no sprite renderer and no Unity 2D. So, how long has you been? You've been working on that game, man. Yeah, we started uh, last year, in fact, and we iterated quite a lot on that game. Really, last year? I didn't yeah. know that uh, there was no sprite renderer like last year. There okay. was not, no, the 4.6 uh, launched like uh, in the end of summer or something like that. Okay, 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 so. okay. Okay, so it's been like almost uh, a year and a uh, okay, a year and a half you're working on. And how much um, before the release? Uh, what will be an estimated date? Uh, we have about uh, one year of development ahead of us. Okay, so another year. Okay. We are, we are somewhere in, in between. So um, all the mechanics are figured out right now. Okay. Uh, we know what we want to do with the game and we know how much time it will take to make the game. Okay. So uh, what, what is left to do is actually make the content. So we know what game we want to do. We just have to do it now. Okay. Yeah, and to add to that, um, we spent a lot of time, you know, just the Shadow Core is quite a complex, <laughs> complex game mechanic to. To, in, to put in the game, uh, just as David, he spent so much time programming it, uh, which we, we think we switched versions like 10 times, honestly, with the controls Shit. and like okay. that. What? But now we have the basics are solid and we're just making more levels, basically, that's what's left. And we have all the, the story figured out and uh, okay. we just need to get to do it. So. Yeah, yeah, execution, you know, uh, yeah, that, that's the biggest part. I mean, the basement are super important, the core and everything. <laughs> he's so shy in the but background. Ask, ask a question to Matt, man, he's too shy. Hey, Matt. I'm how not you... too much talkative, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna ask simple questions since you're shy. So how are you doing? <laughs> doing really good, and you? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I really like your uh, Twitch animation for the combat and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. And now you have like awesome people I'd like to be just like below you, and you're like right in front of everybody. So <laughs> I'm just sneaking around in the back. <laughs> Sweet. So how long have you been an artist, man? Uh, I've been an artist. I, I actually studied uh, fine arts, uh, and uh, after that, I studied 3D animation. Okay. So I've been uh, doing art for like more than 10 years, about. Okay. So, Sweet, 10 years already. Time yep. goes fast, man. So now, uh, can you does your uh, 3D animation um, skills apply to this game? I mean, even though it's a 2D yeah. game, maybe you have you can. Uh, managed to get some. Yeah, yeah, especially with the new like uh, Unity 2D engine, they kept like the 3D animation too. So oh, okay. with the animation curves, uh, and uh, you still can uh, animate in like uh, the three axis, so X, Y, Z. Okay. So actually, all my skills in 3D animation are really useful in uh, Unity. Oh, Since sweet. It's okay. not like it's a 3D 2.5D. It's not really 2D system. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you can still uh, get those skills. All right, I'm gonna go back at the audience for now. Hang on, where are they from? They have a thick accent. I think it's hot. Oh, you, there you go, guys. People think you're hot already. I can answer that one, actually. They come from the same town as me, from Quebec City. So they're from Quebec. So that accent is a French accent. <laughs> Uh, sweet. Okay. Ask it at. Okay. Ask at what point in development process do you decide to run a Kickstarter? Uh, I'll answer that. Okay. Uh, sweet. Go ahead. <laughs> well, in fact, uh, we had the uh, Kickstarter in mind since like the very beginning. I think that like two months after we started, we we thought that launching Kickstarter was the right way for us to to move forward. Okay. Uh, um, but. Uh, 
the, like uh, Ben explained earlier, the Shadow Core is a mechanic that we worked a lot, and uh, it just kept delaying the Kickstarter because we didn't feel that we had a product that we were uh, that was ready to be shown to public. Okay. So uh, what's what's the, the the Shadow Core? You keep talking about that, and it's all mysterious and everything. What's, yeah. what's that? So that's a small. Uh, the, the player fun. can control okay, cool. you can the platforms so you can use it to uh, for its magic so you can uh, unlock doors with that you can uh, solve puzzles uh, block lasers use it okay. as a counter weight uh, and in combat as well so you can shield yourself from uh, projectiles okay, okay, okay. As well. okay it's yeah. kind of a magic slash skills that you can uh, okay. use to uh, control yeah. the environment and the enemy and block okay okay yeah it's really the uh, it's the main mechanic of the game pretty much so uh, <laughs> Jumping is one of the mechanics because it's a platformer, but uh, everything is uh, made around the shadow core. Okay, okay. I'm uh, getting... the, uh, basically, uh, when, when we developed the shadow core, um, basically, I came up with the idea um, why not control your own platform in a platformer? So that's pretty much how we started the whole thing. Then we found new ways to use it. And the thing, the main thing is, you can use it the way you want. Like in one situation, there's not one good way to use the shadow core and one okay. wrong way. It's basically, if you're a reckless guy, you can just use it, you know, to push through with additional platforms in the air. If you're a cautious guy, you can block things with it and yeah. place it, you know, exactly where you want. So it really depends on how you play the game. Reminds me of tribes a little bit. Like uh, you can use a different uh, solution to one puzzle, you know, based on what you want. So you have like a skills, a skill set of uh, a tool set in front of you, and you can use different stuff. So that I really like that kind of level design. And that's the hardest uh, kind of level design, actually. Uh, who is, who made the level design? You, right, Ben? Yes, no, yes. The game designer? Is the, the, the level design. Oh, uh, I work with Matt. Uh, okay. The, um, yeah. yeah, we're two people, so we like we throw each other ideas. And okay. We test it, so sometimes you kind of get hooked on a part of the level design the other one did. So, yeah, it's a two-man job. And Basically, the, the thing is, uh, you know, I, I read the story, and is the artist, so it's really important for us that the story doesn't block or slow down the gameplay. Okay. Uh, it has to fit end in end. So by doing the level design together, we can do the the story uh, that you know the story will fit with the gameplay. Never slow down the gameplay and things like that. We don't want to do that. So. Okay, they're like intertwined together. The level design yeah. and the story. Sweet. All right, I'm gonna go back to some question on the audience. How uh, old? <laughs> Sorry, somebody's really want to get in your pants because he said, "How old are they? Are they single?" <laughs> And I think it's the same guy asking that if they were you were hot with your accent. I don't yeah. trust his name though. Sorry, what? <laughs> I don't trust his uh, Twitch name. Yeah, <laughs> butt stabber forever. <laughs> At least it's direct. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, sweet. I'm gonna switch from question. But how old are you though? Oh. Yeah, we are all 26. 26. I'm 25. Oh, you're 25. Okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's the midget. <laughs> midget. <laughs> Hang on, we have like 25 and 10 years of experience. How you how you handle that? <laughs> how did you manage to do that? Photoshop, Photoshop. I learned all the shortcuts with the the for dummies. So I started back in high school. So yeah. Oh, okay, he always sweet. did. Uh, he always did dank memes. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> okay, so Photoshop and lots of cocaine. I get it. Uh, sweet. Uh, what pizza do you guys like? Pizza. Uh, yeah, I like all the rest. Any kind. <laughs> yeah, all the rest. Kind, as we long have, as they cheese on it. I have a story for you guys about David. Oh, um, nice. We were at PAX South with you. You were at PAX South also. And um, on the last night, we, we tried to order some pizza, some Domino. And because we were dead tired, and you know we had to wake up at 2, 2 a.m. to just you know take the plane and get back. And so David just calls the pizza, the pizza place. And he's like, yeah, I want a whole dress pizza. And in the States, it works with toppings. So... The girl on the phone's like, okay, what toppings? And David's like, I want whole dress. <laughs> and she just repeats, what toppings? And it goes up like five times. And then they David got in an just, infinite loop. David just rages and is like, oh, you know what? I can so And just, you know, uh, click the phone. And, and, then, and then I had to call back because like, we're still hungry. 
So he just he just raged at the pizza, basically. So he raged, <laughs> so he raged at the pizza guy when he didn't have a solution. Yeah. So, so I just you don't understand, and, woman. Uh, I, just, I just said the toppings and we got a pizza. So. <laughs> Okay, so you were a man with a solution. Okay, okay, so if I follow you guys, I'm following you, Ben. You have the solution. Yes. Sweet. <laughs> okay. Uh, Orimus asks you, what if the two, the, the 20 grants for the Kickstarter actually supporting the breakdown? Uh, Want to go for this? Yeah, I can go for that. Uh, so the 20 <laughs> changes, uh, well, the... The usual is always the Kickstarter cut. Uh, there's also the taxes that have to be taken off. Uh, the physical rewards, uh, we have to pay for them. So uh, with the, about a bit more uh, a bit more than the half will remain uh, for us. And um, well, we, we happen to, uh, to have enough money to feed ourselves. I mean, by feeding, I mean like eating craft dinners. Uh, <laughs> I know and, uh, Indie eating, life. Yeah, maybe next week we'll be able to pay for some sausage. That'd be great. Yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so we have enough money for that, and we should be able to reach the end of the development. Uh, and the the money that will be remaining, we are mm. planning to use most of it uh, for promoting the game. So okay. hopefully we'll be able to be at more conventions. But if we don't have the the, the help of the backers. Mm. I believe that the Paxis will be our last, uh, the, the one we went uh, a few months okay. ago, will be the last that we'll be able to uh, afford. to afford, yeah, for that yeah, game. It costs a lot of money, right, mm. just to go yeah. around the world and present your game. I mean, I know what it is, we got pick, uh, I mean, I'm going to Atlanta for Momocon, and it was like, <laughs> yeah, we got nominated, and then we have like 3,000 bucks to just like cover everything, like the, the promo stuff, and then get over there, blah, 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 so that's a lot of money just to go out to a place and show your game around, you know, so, yeah, yeah okay, totally, totally agree that uh, that money will serve well. Okay, so your question now, do you guys have any inspiration from Limbo, the game? What's barely the story? So this this, this is two questions from Butt Stabber Forever. Yeah, well, well, first we came up with the idea of uh, light versus uh, darkness. Okay. So uh, after that, we actually looked at some uh, inspiration. So we went back uh, to the early Shantry movie where it's where it was a uh, paper cut movies all in mm -hmm. silhouette style so we uh, looked at uh, limbo for sure since they kind of promoted the silhouette style for video games mm -hmm. and we took a lot of inspiration to try and uh, kind of learn how to integrate nice backgrounds without like uh, demoting the front end of the graphic so okay. we still want the front to be attractive but we want a background that still uh, conveys an emotion or an immersive experience Okay, so it was definitely an inspiration, but it was not the only one. You didn't like. No, no, no. no we it doesn't feel like you copied Lay Limbo. So. Yeah, no, we yeah. took it as an inspiration, like Bastion for a narrative wise. Yeah. So, yeah, we looked at all the games we like, and uh, we actually made a kind of crazy baby about it. <laughs> sweet, uh, sweet. Okay, I've uh, got another guy. So, Telmec is asking, what are your advices for a game developer beginner? Somebody who starts. Hmm, I'll Maybe get back that. to David for that. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I guess he's giving me the phone since uh, I've been in the industry for a bit longer than he's been. Okay. Um, and I'm also teaching at school, so hopefully I will be able to, uh, to guide you a little bit. Uh, so, before being... Uh, the, the specific question is for a developer or for being an indie or... It's like uh, for a game developer. Okay, for a game developer, well, you, you need skills. Uh, studios don't tend to care that much about how you get the skills. So if you have some good schools uh, in your area, that that's a good option. Mm -hmm. uh, but make good research about the schools because they are not always um, that great. Uh, yeah. Sometimes uh, teachers, the, the bulk of teachers tend to be uh, outdated, so be be cautious about that um we are lucky in quebec we have a lot of really good schools but uh, we've seen our stories on the internet so it doesn't seem to be uh, the same everywhere yeah um, I've, I've seen schools like uh, just trying to lure people in with like be a game developer in three days uh, only a thousand bucks or something yeah. like that you know and then you know you didn't earn anything and you lost a thousand bucks you know so there's a lot of horror story like that so i do agree be cautious good one 
So be cautious about that. Uh, if you don't seem to find a, a good school around you, or uh, maybe you're not, not really that much into that, or maybe you're working at the same time and it's not something that you can do, uh, you can get the skills in other fashions. So uh, start by making maybe something. I mean, you need to do something, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So to learn, uh, I would suggest suggest to start with a small project. And by a small project, I don't. I really mean small, like. Uh, <laughs> make that square move from left to right. Yeah, uh, that's a very good project to start. Yeah, so, uh, totally start agree. with that, and then w now that you know how to move a square uh, from left to right, what about up and down? And uh, oh, okay, some inputs would be nice. Uh, mm. And you you keep going on and make more and more projects. Um, you don't want to spend too much time doing one project, uh, especially in the learning curve, because uh, your skills will increase very very fast. So you don't want to do uh... a <laughs> guy. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, you, you don't. Um, if you spend too much time on your first projects, uh, just two weeks after, you will go back to your code or whatever you made earlier, and you will be like, "Oh, I was really not that good two weeks ago, and yeah. now you're very much better." And it will be go on for months. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but what the fuck? That's for it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope it's worth it. <laughs> what the fuck, right Ben? <laughs> <laughs> what is giving you advice and everything saying that you should totally do that because I'm a professional, I know stuff. You're like, like Ben, hey, I'm naked, mom, I'm on TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> you brought all my credibility, man. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when your Kickstarter viewer, like like people are going to pledge on your Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> Go reach, bam, only in five minutes. <laughs> yeah, you're lucky because uh, I think it's the second time only I I get to see that. So and I can see that's uh, that's marvelous. That's something you want to see every day. So. Oh, the timing was perfect, guys. Kudos to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to get that interview back on track. Okay, to resume your advice though, because I did, I did agree a lot with what you were saying. You were saying like do small stuff and try to get your skills uh, anywhere, either at a schools, but be cautious if you go in schools. Or you don't know, try to learn by yourself and if you do do small project first start small and that's the first big the big advice I, I always talk like over and over again like when um, when anybody asking me the, the same question I say start small do something small because you will fail it will be hard and then you'll get better so yeah I do agree with you yeah and if you find a small project idea well it's not small enough so don't do it find find a smaller one yeah yeah <laughs> It's totally not agree. Enough. And also, uh, you know, the, the biggest. <laughs> you guys are nah, back. Back. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> The biggest mistake. <laughs> like, and also, uh, I'm back in professional yeah, mode now. Oftentimes, they get overwhelmed by the scope of a project. And yeah. uh, the, it's a common mistake about, about indies and uh, new, you know, newcomers. It happened to us. Uh, uh, honestly, when we first started Lightfall, we never thought it would be that complex with the in game narration, the shallow core, yeah. and things like that. So. Uh, just, just just be mindful of the, the scope and always be sure to not be overwhelmed by the scope because you can have like six months of development and things like that. So, so. Yeah, I do agree. I do agree. Something that you think it was going to take like a week can take three months super easily. So if you think six months, it's going to take three years. So yeah. yeah. Questions. Uh, how you started making video games and winning money with them? From Darkness Party. Um when did we start to make games? Yeah, when, when, uh, how, okay, how you started making video games and winning money uh, with them? That's from Dark And make Sparta. money with them. Okay. Uh, well, the... we never made any money with games. So okay, that's so far. kind of a problem, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were from the industry, right? Uh, yeah, I, well, I've been past, I was in the industry before. Uh, okay. In fact, I didn't know these guys one year ago. So, yeah, I, I worked like five years in the industry okay. uh, at other studios. So people used to pay me to make games. Um, I I'm get, I got into the industry by, uh, well, having skills first. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also happened to uh, be involved in the local uh, events. Mm -hmm. So, um, I. Well, well, uh, while I was uh, studying, uh, I kept going to the events that they are, we had uh, in the area. Okay. And 
usually the the, the, the HR people they are uh, at those events. Yeah. And Try even to though get I didn't hands. really chat with them, uh, we started to like recognize each others. And uh, once I had an interview, uh, <laughs> well, I, we had something in common we could talk about and. Yeah, they, they knew I was involved, so uh, okay. I guess that's uh, something that really helped. Okay, so actually you go to events uh, like uh, game jams and stuff like that, so then you can meet some people and get some contact. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Do agree, I do agree. Mm -hmm. Sweet, uh, next question will be, uh, that's a good question actually from Darkness Sparta. Sometimes one of the studio have, okay, one of the, one guy on the studio have uh, less work than the rest. How do you have to react to that? Th this one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this guy is the. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, honestly, uh, it was more at the beginning. It's true that I was, uh, you know, I was the business guy, the writer of the story. But at the beginning, you know, first months, there was no business to be done. Yeah. We basically had nothing to show, so no fan base. So obviously, at the beginning, my workload was, uh, you know, Smaller. less less than the, the two guys. But now I'd say we're pretty much all even. Uh, you know, we we have. All have our own task. We we, we, we come to the studio. Uh, I have all the business stuff to do. David, uh, you know, it does all the programming. Matt's the artist, so you know, yeah. everything that we need: Photoshop, uh, images, videos is the is the guy to do it. So uh, it's pretty even now. But uh, at first, I was part time, and then I uh, when I, I saw that the project was you know really blooming, and then we had a chance to really make something here. Uh, that's that's when I uh, I left my my, my job and uh, went full time on this. But okay. now now we we also have part time jobs. Me and David. Yeah. Okay. That's why you see the FedEx here. But uh, <laughs> you know we work full time on this and we have part time jobs as well. So it's okay. pretty heavy uh, weeks, but it's fun. So yeah. Sweet. And also uh, to get back on uh, on you know your workload were smaller. Uh, he was uh, saying that you were talk you were working with Matt with some level design. You know. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, I bet, like, uh, I know that happened with the studio in our studio. When there was somebody who had less work, you try to, you know, since you are a super small team, you get some tasks from another guy, you know, from another skill set. For example, I was starting to animate him, but I'm a coder, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not a drawer or anything, but I was starting to, you know, have some bits, uh, some little uh, task here and there to um, to help my my teammates. So you, you kind of learn new skill sets that allow you to expand your, uh, your task. Uh, uh, yeah, and that, uh, so, that's what happened to me. I mean, uh, yeah, right. I, w I never programmed it before, and uh, Matt was at first was the one doing all the level design on Unity. Mm -hmm. So you know his workload was quite heavy. Mm -hmm. So uh, David just came to my house and showed me around Unity, and uh, I've learned from you know just practicing and uh, so yeah. now I can do the level design with him so yeah, yeah. exactly it's, it's pretty cool that you kind of learn new skill set just by osmosis you know just by being around other people with other skill set you learn well, a lot a, of stuff David's so. a teacher so I mean he's pretty good if, oh, he, if okay. he can teach me for, uh, to use unity he can pretty much teach anyone so. <laughs> sweet uh, okay another question for my good friend butt stabber forever do yeah. you guys have any struggles during development lack of money or demotivation also, how do you deal with demotivation? Demotivation. demotivation. Uh, well, of course, the lack of money is kind of a problem. We spend a lot of time, like trying to get some subvention. We look at all the government things, and uh, yeah, it burns a lot of time. We're just doing the paperwork and everything to find money, so that inevitably delays the game. But uh, yeah, we managed to to go through it. So okay. and uh, the Kickstarter is part of it. So. We needed kind of a little bit more money to finish the game, mm -hmm. so we took uh, a month to prepare the Kickstarter for that. So, yep. And I get, I bet that having like a smaller goal during development helped you to be motivated to stay motivated, right? Like for example, you were at PAX uh, East, uh, so I bet like there was a lot of work to do. Like let's finish a demo because we're gonna be over there. So it's like it, it yeah, brings yeah, some motivation. And yeah, then the we Kickstarter, have, like uh, delivery date, so we yeah. don't get lost uh, in our mind and do like uh, random stuff. Deadlines, around. super important. Yeah, that's it. There you go. Okay, sweet. Uh, how do you keep tracks of things left to do and who does what? Actually, we found out a kind of web system. It's called Trello. So you just have like a, a virtual Post-it card. Ah, so okay. it just, yeah, we have a wall like for Ben, so we post all the things we want him to do during the week. So it kind of makes checklists, so we can have our personal checklist and okay. what the other wants us to do. 
So uh, we try ah. to keep like a weekly update on that. Okay. And we try, Ben, ben tries, yeah. <laughs> and what's it called again? Trello? Uh, Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O. Okay, T-R-E-L-L-O. There we go. Okay, there you go. Somebody in the, in the chat knows what you're talking about. Sweet. Okay, I'm going to go with one last question, guys, because I don't want to uh, spend too much of your time. You have some Kickstarter to uh, to work on. So, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, which are, okay, we're going to do the question. Do you guys look up at indie companies like Grind Gear Games, who develop Path of Exile, and it's a free-to-play game with huge fan base. Yeah, uh, we look at at their uh, like their media road. So how they got uh, noticed by the medias, by the internet, and everything. So we kind of did an exercise at the beginning of the development of the game. Okay. We looked at like five, six studios. How uh, they got known by the public. How okay. they published their games. Uh, if they published on PC first, then uh, console and everything. Okay. So yeah, we try to kind of learn from the mistakes of the others so Good that uh, speed up the the development that brings me to another question actually a bonus question what platform will be uh lightfall available for right now lightfall is uh, on pc and mac and okay. uh, actually in the kickstarter we have some stretch goal for the playstation xbox and linux sweet is vita and uh, we have to say we are already accredited uh, uh, Sony developers. Oh, nice. So if we reach the stretch goal, we'll be on... Uh, yeah, and we also been uh, greenlit already, so we'll be nice. on Steam for sure. Sweet, okay, cool. Uh, well, we're going to wish you good luck with that project, guys. So I'm going to close the interview too. right now. Thank you very much for being on the show, guys. You've been awesome, awesome people I'd like to be, I must say. So everybody, please say hi to my good friends at Bishop Games, and I wish you best luck with your Kickstarter, guys. Thank you, see ya. Thanks for being on the show, man. Thanks, Ash.